You never know when a great opportunity is going to land on your doorstep. And on Friday night, prior to the Oklahoma-San Diego State game, great opportunity was there for both these teams, thanks to Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, uh, prior to this NCAA tournament, I never even heard of those guys. and I didn't really give them a lot of respect. I said that Georgetown, yeah, they got that game won. <laughs> Who knew that in that section of the bracket that was going to be the episode of the tournament as Georgetown, I guess, underestimated them. I underestimated Florida Gulf Coast. They end up beating the uh, Hoyas. So, that meant that now all of a sudden, you're looking at a wide open uh, side of the bracket in the South. And for the winner of OU San Diego State on Sunday, a game against Florida Gulf Coast and not Georgetown, and the winner on Sunday getting to play in Dallas uh, the following week. And for Oklahoma, you can win that one, then you're getting a chance to bring out a ton of fans, making that trip down I-35 South, just two and a half hours. Again, great opportunity. Of course, you got to beat San Diego State, a team that, just like yourself, wasn't playing very well entering this tournament. And the guy from San Diego State named Jamal Franklin, whom in the uh, Mount West Conference semifinals against New Mexico played like complete crap. But former... Mount West Conference Player of the Year didn't play like crap last night, especially when his team needed him the most. Uh, San Diego State broke open a uh, tight ball game and ended up pulling away from uh, the Sooners, uh, winning 70-55. And Franklin, was he just you know Michael Jordan or LeBron James? No, but he did enough. Um, shot about 50% from the field, didn't miss a free throw down the stretch, got to the free throw line, and for Steve Fisher, that was good enough. Uh, perfect 7 for 7, 21 points, scoring a little bit more than his seasonal average. And this was just one of those games where I think the NCAA committee did a fantastic job matching these teams up because these teams pretty much mirror imaged each other, and we saw that uh, for about uh, for about 30 minutes in this game. Um, it was hard for these teams to get separation from each other. I think there was one point where OU led by 9, and San Diego State you know, cut that, and then San Diego State might have had a slight lead. And then the Sooners were able to um, were able to battle back. But it was 48-48, slightly over 10 minutes to go in the game. You didn't know what was going to happen. Or maybe we should have known what was going to happen. Because what happened against Texas the second time, what happened against Iowa State in the Big 12 tournament, same thing happened in Philadelphia on Friday night. The Sooners absolutely looked like a different team. The team that we saw win so, uh, so so many games basically the same way by shooting well from the field, by rebounding, by getting contributions from so many players, uh, we didn't see that the final 10 minutes plus against the Aztecs. I think they had six possessions in a row did the Sooners where they didn't score. And then finally, um, now the Sooners trilling in the game, do we see they're all everything player Romero Osby hit a three. You think now OU's going to be coming. Now they're going to be coming back. Another seven possessions in a row where they don't score. And it wasn't just the fact that they weren't scoring, but the shot selections were very mysterious for Long Kruger's team. Uh, the fact that they weren't going inside during that slump, that 13 to 14 possession stretch from the 10-minute mark to about the 6-minute mark of the second half. Give San Diego State credit. At the same time, though, really criticize the team for their shot selection. At, at, at times, just, just taking shots, um, mis mysterious shots, like I said, uh, shots that just weren't right. And the bottom line is that you can kind of tell which team in this game was the most experienced in that particular situation, San Diego State making their fourth straight NCAA appearance, and Oklahoma, a team who hadn't been to the NCAA tournament in four years. And people could say, well, experience doesn't matter. Um, Sometimes that might be right, but in this case, I dispute that because San Diego State, the Aztecs, in that situation, look like the more confident team. In that case, they also look like the more knowledgeable team. And on the offensive end, uh, they got separation when it was 48-48 at about the 10-minute mark of the game. On the other end, they were taking better shots. At the end, they were making those shots. In the end, they were getting to the free throw line. In the end, they were out-rebounding the Sooners. The Aztecs, um, who were slightly out-rebounded in half number one, were starting to take over the boards in the second half. Remember, San Diego State, the Aztecs, they're not known for being a great rebounding team. They're, they're more known for being a, a backcourt team. 
you know, the three-point shot is one of their fortes. But in this game, they ended up um, getting separation from the Sooners on the scoreboard and in the rebounding department. And like I mentioned earlier, um, Jamal Franklin ended up um, having a good game. And for the Sooners, I said that was one of the five key games. Contain him. But he couldn't have a, a real good game. And 21 points and getting to the foul line and making all his free throws. Yeah, he had a good game. So mission failed for the Sooners. I mentioned another key thing for Oklahoma was Romero Osby. Osby played well. Final game for Oklahoma. Um, one of five seniors on this team. One of, four, one of four seniors that played a lot for the Sooners this past year for Juan Kruger. Uh, can't blame it on him. Uh, he was spectacular. Played his heart out. Did everything he could. Had a 20-plus point game. That's wonderful if you're a Sooner fan. Nobody else point-wise contributed worth a flip for the Sooners. I don't think anybody else even had double figures in points. Opportunity blown for Oklahoma. Osby couldn't do it all by himself. And just like I said, in several games this year where the Sooners lost, they melted down in the final minutes. And I don't know if it's lack of conditioning, lack of concentration, other teams making adjustments, the, the coaching part not being right. Again, I gave, again, Lon Kruger deserves all the credit in the world for getting the team as far as he did. Um, a great hire by Joe Castiglione, and he's got something great going. Okay, So this is not indicative of the overall job he's done. But this particular game um, and some of the games where they've had where they have not come through, I'm wondering what's going on. Call a timeout, chew these guys out for not getting the proper shot selection, for not going inside enough. And again, I'm going to stress that um, until they can get that part right. Because you should not be going 1-14 of 14 in a very tight game in the NCAA tournament when it's there for the taking. I know San Diego State wants to win that game too. But this is what really hurts. You're taking bad shots in that situation. And, you know, you can't be doing that if you want to go on to the second round and you're going to play a number 15 seed. Opportunity blown for Oklahoma. And then we talked about the free throw game. Sooners didn't get to the free throw line near enough. Four of eight from the free throw stripe for the Sooners. Um, not near enough. And even though they didn't get there near enough, they missed four of them. That's lack of concentration. We know this because the second time they played Iowa State in Norman, they tied an NCAA record for most free throws made in the game without a miss. So, inexcusable once again. To me, it's like that movie in, you know, Hoosiers, you know, where Coach Dale has them, you know, measure from the free throw line to the bucket and then measure the height, you know, from the floor to the bucket, you know, 10 feet, you know, from the free throw line to the bucket. 10, uh, 15 feet is the same distance and height there at Wells Fargo in Philadelphia that it is at Lloyd Noble in Norman. Same. And they didn't get to the free throw line enough because they weren't going inside enough when they needed to. So that's self-infliction right there. And what did I say the fifth key to the game was? If you didn't watch my preview, please do. The final key, the finishing touch. And there wasn't one for Oklahoma. It ended up being pretty much what ended up slamming the door shut for the Sooners. And for San Diego State, they pretty much squashed OU like great. Wow. Uh, San Diego State got hot. And then we, when they were missing, hey, let's get the offensive rebound. We'll put it back in. We'll get the rebound. We'll go to the front line. And for the Sooners, one shot and done. We're turning the ball over. Things that, again, we didn't see for a lot part this season. The Sooners and Aztecs did not play their best ball down the stretch. Mountain West Conference and the Big 12 have looked pathetic in the tournament thus far. But the, the, this was about two teams, one game, an opportunity to go to the next round on Sunday to play Florida Gulf Coast. Again, Florida Gulf Coast, we, we learned, is not your typical 15 seed. But both teams, I think, think that this is an opportunity on Sunday to get one step closer to the Sweet 16. And for Oklahoma... If they could have won against San Diego State, then they would be really licking their lips with a chance maybe to get a step closer to playing at Jerry's World in Arlington. And they would have had maybe, just maybe, a lot of red in Arlington and, again, a lot of confidence. But blown opportunity, not going to happen for um, Oklahoma. And it was the same theme as we saw in previous OU games. The last eight or nine minutes, you know, Andrew Fitzgerald, where were you? Stephen Pledger. 
where were you? Last night, Sam Grooms, where were you? Isaiah Cousins, you know, freshman, played well in the first half. Second half, where were you? Didn't con didn't make contributions. And then, um, you know, Buddy Heald missed a good part of the year because of injury. Came back a few weeks ago. Physically not the same. Mentally, the guy's really, really not the same. Never really recovered on either account. For the Sooners, they did some fantastic things this year, things that we didn't think were going to happen. Nobody in their right mind would have thought Oklahoma was going to go to the NCAA tournament. So congrats to Oklahoma for at least getting as far as you did and for giving you know, Sooner fans a lot of great members, 20 wins for this team. Um, that's something that uh, Sooner fans can be pretty proud of. It's just, um, yeah, I guess it's just disappointing, not only because of the way they finished this game, but because of the opportunity that was there with the number 15 seed waiting for you on Sunday in Philadelphia with Georgetown out of the way, and now San Diego State, congratulations to them and to Steve Fisher, whom I think should be, uh, once he retires in the, uh, like, like I said before, he should be in the Basketball Hall of Fame for what he's done in his coaching career you know, at Michigan, getting them to several Final Fours and winning a national title back in 1989 with Glenn Rice and Ramiro Robertson and those guys, and what he's done also at San Diego State. Um, they've gotten to the NCAA tournament several times. He's done spectacular things at two different schools, and I don't think he gets appreciated near enough. And uh, San Diego State definitely saves space for the Mountain West. And, boy, it's been bad for the Big 12, though. Oklahoma State looked like crap against Oregon. Um, they looked even worse. And uh, Kansas State losing to LaSalle. Are you kidding me? Iowa State right now, um, you got to give it up to them. They played well against Notre Dame, whooping the Irish. So at least uh, they've given the Big 12 some pride. Kansas, uh, my gosh, number one seed playing close to home in Kansas City, and they uh, they got all they wanted in their first round matchup with Western Kentucky, and they have to feel fortunate. Not first round, but second round. You know what I mean? Second round against Western Kentucky, um, able to uh, hang on for dear life. But again, just shows you that that the Big Twelve, uh, the the league this year, uh, it was competitive, but but maybe. Um, I don't know. Maybe this league, maybe I gave them a little bit too much credit. Maybe it was just bad matchups. But overall, um, maybe this league just wasn't, um, as Dennis Green said, what I thought they were. So We'll see. Congratulations to the Aztecs. Uh, the last nine, ten minutes, they uh, they whipped Oklahoma pretty good after it was anybody's game after the first 29 and a half minutes. But still, the Sooners, proud of you for getting as far as you did. Do I think Oklahoma will get back to the NCAA tournament? You know, not next year. Not next year. You, you lose Romero Osby, your best player. You also uh, lose three other contributing players on the team. Um, you know, the, the seniors, um, including Sam Grooms. Um, I think they'll have a, a quality team next year. But unless you get some pretty good recruits coming in, too much experience lost this past year. And uh, they've got to get some things corrected. And also, too, they're not going to be able to sneak up on teams uh, next year like they did this year. So maybe next year's team will be like this year's team and prove so many, including yours, truly wrong. But it's work trying to get to the NCAA tournament. This team overachieved. They did it. Maybe next year's team will do the same, but on paper, um, they're probably going to be a middle-of-the-pack team next year in the Big 12. We'll see what Long Kruger can whoop up next year. This year's team did some great things. Proud of them. But it ends in Philadelphia, San Diego State. Uh, too much the last nine or ten minutes of the game, and they'll move on to play Florida Gulf Coast. Gotta love the NCAA tournament. Let's, of course, you're an OU fan like me. <laughs> Where's my bracket? There it is. Boomer Center.